Come on, like five more minutes. Sorry, man. I gotta go. Okay, so uh, first of all, voice is gone. Uh, been sick. And yeah, so that happened. So hopefully you can actually hear me. Uh, second of all, uh, we got a lot of toys. Yes, we do. This is also Tyler. We got a lot of toys to play with today. Two Tylers, I know. This is, this is a lot to handle. Um, but we got we got my 5D. That's what I'm vlogging on right now. Got a 1DX Mark II. Got a red Gemini. 5K? Is that, is that? Yeah. Shoots 5K. Shoots 5K. And we've got my C200 and the pocket camera. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of go out and shoot some stuff. This is going to look kind of familiar. This is the last place that I shot some Black Magic Raw stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're just going to kind of test, shoot, shoot some stuff and maybe do some tests, kind of compare compare and contrast some of the cameras. Um, might even intertwine the footage. So if, if that's what we do, then see if you can guess what camera is what. about to pour down rain and I'm not going to be responsible for a red Gemini, a C200 and a black magic pocket camera all dying because of rain and one fair swoop just for some footage so we're going to go try to find something else. Well, there's Charleston for you. We were sweating our butts off in the woods filming, and now it's cooled down and it's pouring down rain. So I think we're done filming outside. We might go up to the studio and uh, take a look at the cameras up there, kind of test them all out and kind of compare and contrast. But I think what we're going to do is I think we're going to focus this video on an ASUS workflow and kind of jump into ASUS, learn a little bit about it, and uh, yeah, see what we can see what we can learn with ASUS. So uh, let's go up to the studio and uh, let's take a further look at it. Chelsea's working from home today. Hi, Joe. Hi. I'm definitely gonna have to rest my voice though, cause I can't even talk now. So, uh, yeah, be back in like a week. Oh, I feel so much better. Actually, I have a voice back. That's good. It's like 95% there, a little raspy here and there, but uh, at, at least I didn't, don't sound like a, like I did. That was awful. Anyways, that's not what the video is about. This video is about ASUS. And what the heck is ASUS? Well, in layman's terms, well, first of all, it's an acronym. It stands for the Academy Color Encoding System. Academy meaning like Oscars, like that Academy. And yeah, it's basically the Academy over the last, I don't know, 10 years or something like that developed this, basically it's like an open standard unified color space, color encoding system. It's a unified color space that really, basically in layman's terms, and we're gonna focus on color grading here, it really helps match different cameras. It kinda, it kinda works like the color transform-ish in uh, DaVinci Resolve, but it's a, a little bit more uh, complicated and technical than that. But yeah, it basically helps match uh, different cameras, different camera manufacturers. So if you shot a project on a RED and a Canon and an Airy and Blackmagic, kind of bring them all into uh, the ASUS world and it kind of helps kind of unify that color, color science and, and all that color encoding to yeah, basically make it easier to match. And what it does is really helps kind of create a good starting point for color grading. Anyways, Enough blabbering. I'm definitely not an expert on this subject. There are way more people that are much more intelligent and much more informed on the actual subject of ASUS than myself. 
If any of you are watching, please correct me down in the comments. Definitely not trying to offend anybody. I'm learning it myself. I figured I would just kind of show what I've learned so far about, especially specifically in DaVinci Resolve, kind of what I've learned. And, and really the way I wanted to learn was I had a bunch of different cameras at my disposal and we just kind of shot and that's, yeah, I just wanted to kind of start learning um, the ACES and I figured no better way to start than, than just shooting footage on a bunch of different cameras and getting into it. But enough blabbering, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. We'll start a new project, bring all that footage that you saw from the intro into a timeline and you kind of see how all the different clips react to uh, the settings when you switch over to an ACES color space. So let's do it. Okay, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve and I've gone ahead and set up a project and a timeline and just kind of have a couple different clips here from some of the video that we saw earlier and just some other random clips. Here's the clips that we shot in the studio just to kind of test out. So we're gonna go over here to the project settings over here down to the bottom right or you can hit Shift 9 or just come over here to File and go to Project Settings right here. And we're gonna find our way over to the Color Management tab. And this is all in DaVinci Resolve 16 Beta, so uh, it may look a little different depending on what version of Resolve you're in. But if you go into the Color Management tab, there should be something similar uh, with all these different settings. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the Color Science, and we're at DaVinci Wire GB right now. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna switch over to ACES CC. Now you see there's ACES CC and CCT. And the real difference is to do with how it handles shadows. And if we come over here to this little PDF document, you can see that basically ACES CCT is similar to ACES CC, but with the addition of a toe resulting in a more distinct milking or fogging of shadows when a lift operation is applied during color grading. For everything that I've done, I haven't noticed any difference between CC and CCT and even on my last project, I kind of switched between the two after I was done, and even when I was playing around, I didn't really see a huge difference. So we're just going to stick with ACES CC for now, and then we're just going to use the latest ACES 1.1 for the ACES version. And then we're going to come down here to, you can change all this stuff, we're just going to kind of leave this factory for now. ACES IDT, this is the Input Device Transform and Output Device Transform, and you'll hear these called IDT and ODT. So for the IDT, we're actually going to leave to no input transform because we have codecs from different cameras and all that kind of stuff. We're going to leave it to no input transform. And with raw footage, the input transform is automatically detected, which is super nice. So we're not going to do anything with that. And for the ODT, we're going to find the REC 709 because we're going out to the web. But you have all these different settings for REC 2020 and P3 and all that good stuff. But we're going to stick with Rec. 709 because we're going out to the web. So once we set all that up, all we're going to do is we're going to hit save. And then automatically you can see this looks super washed out and crazy. And let's go ahead and update all these thumbnails. But you can see this raw footage here. It all kind of starts looking pretty good. It's kind of a good Rec. 709 starting point ready to go. Uh, same here with this red footage. Now, this is the white balance might be off, but that's stuff that we can still change here in the settings once you switch it over to clip. And you still have full raw controls and all that kind of stuff. Change whatever you need to do. But you can see that the color space in the gamma has been grayed out because now we are in the ACES color space. And for the baked in footage, you can see all this kind of looks pretty crazy and unusable and all that kind of stuff. And the reason being is because we haven't actually set an IDT for it. Now there's a couple ways of doing this. You can do it from here or you can do it from the media pool, but we're gonna do it from the color page so we can kind of see how everything reacts right off the bat. And right here, we've got just a standard, standard picture profile from the 1DX. And what we're gonna do here from the ACES input data transform because this was shot in Rec. 709, that's what we're going to assign the IDT to. And right off the bat, you can see this kind of brings it back to looking normal. And then over here, this vlogging, this is standard picture profile again. We'll come over here to Rec. 709, and then boom, it's ready to go, and it looks just like it did right out of the camera. And that makes sense because, again, if we go over to the settings, if we go from our input device transform, if we say we're starting out at Rec. 709, we're ending at Rec. 709, theoretically, it shouldn't look any different. And as you can see, it does not. For the Canon Log 3, 
This is when we actually can assign a IDT from the list that Blackmagic has. You can't, unfortunately, add custom IDTs, so you have to use whatever is available to you. And right here, we're just going to use Canalog 3 Daylight Rec 709. It looks a little blown out, but all we have to do now is just kind of do an exposure adjustment. And there we go. That's all we need to do. And then kind of make any other color grading after that. But this kind of gets you to a good starting point here. And this is just 8-bit footage. So yeah, that's a great starting point. So the next thing I want to look at is this Canon 5D. This is shot in Canon Log in 4K. So we got Motion JPEG, obviously. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. If we go over to the Rec. 709, what it's going to do is it's going to give us basically... Canon log. It's going to look exactly like Canon log did straight out of the camera. But what I've found with this camera is, unfortunately, there's no IDT for just Canon log coming from the 5D or the C100 Mark II or anything like that. So what I have found is actually, oddly enough, if I go to the C200 Daylight Rec. 709, actually, it looks pretty good. And I'm actually pretty pleased with it. And then from there, you can just kind of make any other minor tweaks that you want to do and yeah I mean I'm pretty happy with that and I tested it out on a few other clips and it does look pretty good I'm pretty happy with how that turns out so this is probably what I'll use in the future if I were to use the analog on the 5D Mark IV and it doesn't look all that awful uh, again do it over here and then from here you just you know mess with the sliders whatever the case may be and yeah, and one thing I have noticed is that the sliders, they behave a little differently than they do in DaVinci Wire or GB. Uh, they seem to be a little bit more sensitive. And also with regards to uh, the highlights slider on the log footage, if you add increase the highlight slider, you'll notice that the saturation does get much more pronounced using that slider. So that's just something you need to be aware of. But once you're aware of that, you can use it to your advantage for color grading to get whatever look that you're going after. And that's pretty much all I'm going to kind of go over in this video. Uh, again, this isn't too in-depth, too detailed or anything like that. This is just more of a, a primer. This is just kind of what I've learned so far in the world of ACES. And yeah, I think this is what I am probably am going to use in the future, especially on projects that I'm shooting in RAW. It just makes sense to be able to have a good starting point and less work for me on the front end so I can get to color grading and get the project out a little quicker. Well guys, I hope you found that helpful, useful, informative, anything like that. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider hitting that subscribe button down below and definitely leave a comment down below. Uh, I'm kind of curious to know if, if you work in ASUS, the world of ASUS, or if you just, uh, if, if you're just too intimidated by it or have never heard about it. Anyways, just let me know your experience with it. I'd love to hear it. If anything, hopefully that this video does is just introduces you to the world of ASUS and then you can do way more research after that because again, definitely not an expert. Like always, thanks again for watching and I hope I will see you in the next video. Peace.